Hey, what's up, nerds? It is Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and welcome back to The Warforge. Today, I want to talk about some simple sort of hacks, some tricks that you can do to boost up your paint scores at events. Hacker Man. Now, this is specifically talking about tournaments where there's a painting component to the event. Um... Usually this is going to be in the form of a separate painting award category and as some sort of like a best overall where you're aggregating you know, paint, sportsmanship, and um, your actual tournament record. So with that, uh, I wanted to go through some simple things. Um, you know, my number one hack for boosting up your score and... Uh, then a few other items that you can use in your normal army painting to, you know, impress the judges and pop up those scores to help you move up the ladder a bit in those best overall rankings and, you know, maybe give you a shot in uh, getting in the player's choice showcase uh, and, you know, maybe get you more towards the direction of uh, those best painted awards if that's what you're into all right so the number one hack are you ready most events these days use a painting rubric of some type like a checklist for the initial evaluation and scoring of your paint and hobby work in order to come up with that actual scoring. This is typically more of like objective sort of measurements. So um, that leaves you with some more obvious sort of choices that you can make. So with the fact that we know that most of these events have painting rubrics, uh, many events actually will also have that painting rubric in the event pack as well. And when they don't, Age of Sigmar being the community of cool people that it is, uh, you can probably just uh, get in touch with the tournament organizer and ask them for a copy of you know, the painting rubric, how they're scoring on painting for the event. Really simple. You just ask look at what you need to do to score points and then in your preparation for the event most people you know like to level up their paint jobs on their army on uh in that lead up to the event maybe they're just painting it for the first time um what you can do is take those bullet points those different items on the checklist and make sure that you're incorporating those into your army these are typically things that are not super secret, weird, complicated. It's all pretty straightforward, objective sorts of things. Is X present in this army? How many models? Like, what's the percentage of models in the army that has a certain thing? Like, is it, oh, is it the majority have this particular thing going on that might be worth more points? It all sort of depends. I've seen a few different ones. Um, I actually use one myself when uh, I'm doing like small local events. Um, you know, I like to give out painting awards and being somebody that, um, I don't know, like I'm not an expert painter. So I, th I find it really helpful for those sort of fundamentals. That's really kind of like what they're looking for is fundamentals that you can just pick it out pretty objectively and this is also something administratively that eases the burden on the event organizers you can go through you can score everybody's army there's very little subjective about it you just go you look at it you go down the checklist has this has this doesn't have this there it is you can have a team of five or ten people go out and do that and it doesn't really matter because you don't have that subjective judging then when they actually do ultimately uh, pick who's going to be 
the best painted or best hobby or whatever for the event, they'll typically, you know, gather up the top score people and then have more of a subjective judging for those in particular. So what sorts of things in the uh, event that you don't have a painting rubric that is available to you for an event, or, you know, you're just looking to have uh, an army that's going to score well at pretty much any event that you go to, what are some of the things that those event organizers and paint judges, what are they looking for? So I think the number one thing is actually just having a display board at all. Um, it doesn't have to be super exciting, but there's usually some, a, a, like a decent chunk of your hobby score is going to be based around your display board. And if you don't even have one, well, that's a whole bunch of points automatically out the window. It's free real estate. And those display boards are not hard to make. You know, a few pieces of terrain, some paint, some styrofoam that you can pick up for 10 bucks at Home Depot. You cut it up, you paint it, you know, add some flock, maybe a couple of pieces of store-bought terrain or fish tank stuff uh, just to have it look a little bit more interesting. Get something going on there. What often is going to give you a couple of extra points as well is if there's like a multi-leveled or tiered sort of aspect to it, that it's not just a big flat board, that there's some kind of elevation to it. You know, th that could be as simple as kind of having like a terraced sort of layout. So everything in the back is up at a higher level and then you kind of step down and then there's some more and some more. Very easy to do. Um, you know, as I said, just some foam insulation board that you can get at the hardware store, glue it down, you know, cut it up, glue it together to, you know, make that basic display board. That's actually something that I'm going to be doing some videos on as well. I'm in the process of making a new display board for my Maggotkin army, and I'm kind of going to 11 with it. So I'm going to be doing probably either one big video or a bunch of smaller videos on what I'm actually doing with it. So that said, what's the next item on the list that tends to get you higher scores? Well, freehand is one of the easy things that you can do to pop up your score. There's usually at least one or two points that is, you know, that you can get from freehand. Um, I think this is something, I know for me, it intimidated me for a long time until I kind of realized that I was already doing it and I was not just not thinking of it as freehand. There are a lot of things like symbols for your army that you can just paint quickly on a banner and they're like usually simple geometric shapes that, you know, pretty much anybody can do if you're able to paint a miniature in general to a decently high standard, you can easily do freehand. Um, Skaven, for example, one of their primary symbols is basically just a triangle, right? That's it. And it kind of like crosses over, so it's got a little bit of stuff hanging out. But, I mean, it's three lines in a basic geometric shape. There's nothing simple to it. And that's going to get you the freehand points because it's freehand stuff on the banner. Um, I'm right now, I think I have it right behind me. Yeah, working on, uh, you can't see it real well with the, oh, there we go. Uh, doing Nurgle symbols on banners for my Maggotkin army. Uh, that one is still in process. I think that particular model is going to get either stripped or just repainted. Because um, I'm still experimenting with techniques and how it's going to look in the end. But again, it's another really simple geometric sort of design that you can throw on your banner. And, you know, it, it's going to get you those freehand points. Um, you know, the Nurgle symbol is three circles and three arrows. I mean, anybody can draw that. Um, 
So uh, another thing too, if you don't really have an abundance of stuff like banners in your army, you can do things like tribal tattoos, uh, adding some symbols onto armor plates and things like that. Uh, lots of little things that you can do. Tribal tattoos are basically just, you know, kind of some lines. It doesn't have to be anything special. It doesn't have to really be planned out designs. You can kind of just scribble whatever you want on there that looks good and roll with that. So there's a lot of little options there for freehand. The more examples of freehand throughout your army, it the higher your score is going to be in many cases. So don't just do freehand on one model, do it pretty consistently across the army. Do it on all of your banners, all of uh, you know, certain types of armor plates. Like if you want all of the uh, like unit champions in your army to really stand out, look special, do some sort of basic freehand on them. And now they're gonna give you those extra points. It's customized a little bit more and it's just a lot more interesting. What else can we do? Uh, more advanced painting techniques. There's, it's kind of a broad category, right? So it's things often that are going to really stand out from, uh, that they're going to be obvious, right? Things like uh, non-metallic metals. That is actually one of the more challenging advanced techniques but it's certainly something you can do. Um, there's lots of videos out there and tutorials on that. I have never attempted that in particular, by the way. Um, I don't personally really like how it looks, although I, I know that it can give you a good education in uh, how light works and things like that to improve. So some really simple techniques that I personally like to use or things like object source lighting and weathering. Weathering often will fall into this category. You just kind of uh, can do that pretty easily. Get some maybe weathering pro uh, weathering products, some streaking grime, do some rust effects that are pretty simple, maybe some blood effects that will uh, sometimes be counting towards that, depending on you know, how they want to judge it. So some pretty simple things. and. Object source lighting is something that I've really kind of recently discovered. Um, basically, some really easy, basic stuff. It like you can just hit it with like an airbrush from a certain direction and like have some like white paint and then like a fluorescent color of you know whatever you want that glow sort of effect to be, um, and then you're basically done. It, it's really not as hard as it sounds. If you try and do it with um, yeah, with a brush, it's gonna be a lot harder. But just doing with an airbrush, it's kind of like magic. Uh, I did it almost by accident with a model. I was really shocked at how well it came out. Um, so the last item that I'm gonna talk about with this is conversions. This is an area too that I think um, intimidates some people and with that um, I think you might be overthinking a little bit it's not necessarily sculpting things from scratch doing crazy custom things you know the general standard that I know of for this is making a noticeable change to a model that kind of has like some intent to it that's really giving some sort of like custom thematic additions to the army that's kind of maybe telling the story a little bit of what's going on. Um, also, sometimes just things for the sake of things like that banner that I showed you a minute ago, um, you know, that will for many people also count as a conversion because it's, you know, uh, Plague Monk banner bit on a, uh, you know, on a flagpole for the, it's a, uh,
it's a plague monk banner on a oh my god it's a plague monk banner on plague bearers pretty simple it was just bits that i had and i think it kind of looks cooler and it gives me a canvas to do some freehand work on that and also with what i'm experimenting with it's going to also be like a glow effect so it's kind of checking off multiple boxes right that one model in the unit is going to be converted it's going to have freehand and it's going to have a glow effect which are all all of those like a glow effect is an advanced painting technique the conversion is there it's super simple but it's really doing something different and the symbol is freehand it's not super advanced freehand you don't have to paint the mona lisa on the side of it right so these are just some really basic tips on hacking your paint scores at events and getting your army to a place where you're going to score a bit higher you know just get out there ask questions see look around ask for painting rubrics if the event that you happen to be going to doesn't have a paint rubric that they can give you or they want to give you or provide um you know a good guide can just be talk to some other tos that you know and say hey um uh, can I borrow, can you send me a painting rubric? Cause I want to get an idea of the things that are going to get me points when you're paint judging. That's certainly an idea as well. Something I've done too. Um, then from there, common things that you're going to see on these painting rubrics a lot, your display board, which arguably shouldn't even be there cause it's not actually part of the army, but it's, it, historically just a thing that we've all done um advanced painting techniques conversions and freehand four pretty easy things that you can do to pop your score up just a little bit higher but with all of those things if you're checking all those boxes you know that's a whole bunch more points that you're going to get like simply having a display board on some rubrics that could give you like you know five or ten percent of your overall score by having a decent display board and they're not hard to make they're not expensive to make so that's it for now guys hope this was helpful to you all out there i'll talk to you all later